Hi, I'm Jose Tejeron, and today we're going to see how to use AI-generated 3D models for our animations. It has never been so easy. While presenting, let me show you the process of creating a character from sketch to life using Rodin, AccuRig, AutoRigging, and ActorCore Motions. The tools to generate 3D models using an image, thanks to AI, are not new, but no other has reached the level of quality and coherence of Rodin AI from HyperHuman. As we will see below, it is capable of understanding and volumizing even simple illustrations. Perhaps the most important thing about this tool is that it allows editing and control of the generated result. Let me show you the tool and how especially useful it is combined with the confinement tools in the entertainment industry. Before I start, I should clarify that these character, scenery, and prototyping tools can be used without advanced 3D modeling skills. How does this AI work? Well, in a nutshell, it is inspired by 2D image generation techniques of AIs that you already know. The architecture of the model is based on a Latin diffusion system, which denotes 3D data. It is as if the AI generates specks of clay in 3D space, it removes those that do not fit the model, and adds more mass to those that it judges to be part of the model. This AI uses an advanced material diffusion approach to create high quality textures, and the process is finished. In total, it took me two and a half minutes. Never before have you gone so quickly from sketch to animated 3D model. And even better, you can do the same without spending any money. AccuRig is free and allows any character we believe can be brought to life in just one minute. You can even view the countless animations in each package of the ActorCore library for free. Want to know how to use these tools in depth? Let's test all this with our own character. When you're designing it, I recommend that it should be a frontal view with the feet and hands separated from the body in which the fingers and toes are perfectly visible. This will give more information to the AI that sometimes corrects by itself the position of the hands so that the model of the character looks more natural. It doesn't matter if you force a little bit the anatomy to correct it, since we'll be able to correct it easily in AccuRig. In my case, I'm going to add some shadows to my character to give him more information, but it is not something that's necessary. The AI works fantastic. With flat illustrations and when making textures, it is preferable that the design does not have a lot of volume. Once the character is created, we will head to Hyperhuman Demos, looking for the AI Rodin Gen 1, which, remember, is still in beta. I'm going to make the first model with a free account, thanks to the credits that are given when we create an account for the first time. I upload the image to the website and the model that it generates in just a few moments, and then we can already see in 3D is processed for free. Not only that, Rodin himself encourages us to generate the 3D model several times, so we can choose which is the result that we like the most. We can generate up to 10 variations, and we have not yet had to spend a single credit. So if we are not convinced, we can simply abandon this project without any penalty. This is what makes this AI completely cool and allows us to use it in a completely professional way. If you have already used other AIs, you will know that sometimes you do not get the result you're looking for, or that the best result sometimes appears after the third or fourth time the AI generates a result. However, we have to pay for each generation it performs. With this tool, we only pay for the product we want and can see without doubts or uncertainties. It's really fantastic. In my case, I see that the area of the red ribbons on the head is not generated as I want. I could continue generating versions until the result is good, but I prefer to generate these ties separately to place them together where I want. On the other hand, I see that I have placed the feet too close together. If you look, the AI knows that this is a biped character and has not merged the Maya of the feet, so the model could be used perfectly in an animation. Even so, I think it could give me problems in the future, so I will make some changes in the character. So I can abandon this project and go back to my drawing program to make the changes that I want. For example, I just thought that I also want his clothes to be darker. And at this point, I take this opportunity to tell you that it is recommended that your character is on a flat or transparent background without background elements that can distract the AI. The AI doesn't need high resolutions to give you the best results, but the images should have a reasonable size in which the details are not blurred or pixelated. Back to Rodin, the result seems to be much better, but I can still adjust it a lot, even more if we have the free account. On the upper right side, we have not only the typical text box to place the prompt, we also have a series of labels that will significantly modify the final result. As a general rule, I would recommend to always have the symmetry activated. The result is usually much better, and in addition, the textures will be generated in a non-symmetrical way, thus solving the problem. As for whether or not to choose labels such as smooth edges, simply geometry, will give better or worse results depending on the character. I recommend trying different combinations to see where the best result is. In the upper corner, you will have the history of generated versions, so you can easily go back to a previous generation. So I'll click on Confirm while I choose the recommended number of polygons to form the figure. 
It is here that we finally spend a credit in addition to the time to generate the texture. In the texture generation section, we also have some options to play with the result of the texture. In general, I recommend leaving the AI enough freedom to work. It is amazing to see, both in 3D and 2D, how it is able to generate the unseen parts from the image with such good coherence. A couple of generations, I found the texture I like the most. To select it, I went to the History menu, which is also at the top. After selecting it and confirming it, I could choose the way to get my final result. You'll notice that next to the reference image, there is a plus symbol. You can add up to five images so that you can make a mix between your 3D models. This opens up a really fantastic window of experimentation that gives fantastic results. In this case, I want to experiment with the concept of insect-shaped spaceships. The most logical thing to do is not to mix more than two other images because the mixture of concepts becomes diluted and is no longer recognizable. In this case, the final model looks really fantastic to me, and I will probably use the model as a 3D sketch base to create a ship model with much more detail. On the other hand, you may have also noticed that more reference images can be included to create the texture. This is especially useful when you're looking for a different finish on the model materials. To do this, I recommend choosing similar objects so the generation of the textures in each of the cases is coherent in our model. In this case, the Roman mask has been generated in 3D in a fantastic way. Even the AI has understood that it was a mask and has generated the back part as such. Something that I didn't even imagine how it could be. When adding reference images, you have to be careful because each new reference image means spending credits. In this case, as you can see, the AI has understood perfectly how to transfer the style of the Aztec mask. Following this idea, I decided to model myself in 3D the shape of the kunai, the weapon that the character carries, and give it to the AI to texture it. If you notice on the left side of the interface, we have three options to control the shape of the 3D model from greater to lesser impact. The first one, called bounding box control, just determines the proportions of the model. The next one is the voxel control, which determines more precisely the shape of the model. The last one would be the point cloud control for a much greater control of the model. We're going to use this last one, but we don't have to model the objects in another program. We can use the handcraft option to create it on the web. Clicking on it will take us to a simple and versatile workbench that will allow us to create almost any type of model for the AI to use as a base. If you look at the left panel, we are offered the basic geometric shapes to assemble the model. But on the left side, we have more options, including the ability to model with brush as if it were sculpting in ZBrush. In this tool, you can not only subdivide the models, but by adding more geometric shapes, the possibilities are endless. In this particular modeling, we will not need the sculpting brush. With these basic shapes, we can easily create the kunai. After finishing and pressing the confirm button, Rodan will ask us what is the level of uncertainty we want to give it. That is, how much freedom we will give it to create the model. In my case, I want to give it hardly any, as I want it to have that particular shape. The same thing would happen with the sampling. I will give it a maximum number. Now when we confirm the model to generate it, we will see that it is necessary to add an image. No problem. I will use the image that I thought to give it to generate the texture. After generating the model and texturing the weapon, it's ready. In just a couple of minutes and without using external programs, I've been able to create the model exactly as I imagined it. And the same can be done with the character. If we design a character that, like this one, has the neck hidden by the head or the hands or not clearly visible, the AI may interpret the information in a way we don't want. We could correct the generated 3D model with the sculpting tools we saw earlier. But if we make it a quick 3D sketch for the AI to reference, we can define the shape of our character's profile view as we want it to be. In this case, for example, the character has very wide and flattened arms that I want to remind us of wings, something that is not appreciated in the conceptual illustration. In this case, I will go to the 3D modeling program, and there I will quickly make the sketch. I upload it to the web in the same section where I have made the weapon. As you can see, the character now complies with my idea of how the character should look, and moreover, the AI has understood the cartoon style of the character and has created the texture accordingly. Most characters will need a few tweaks to the 3D, and more importantly, the texture. I've repainted several parts to make it look exactly like the character I had in mind. These adjustments are really quick since we are already starting from the base that the AI has given us, so we spend much more time than if we modeled and textured the character from scratch. Now comes the most exciting moment, bringing our character to life. Downloading and installing AccuRig is quick and free, it takes just one minute. The first thing we'll do when we import our character into the program is confirm whether it is a symmetrical character or not. If you use a symmetrical option in Rodan, it should be perfectly aligned by default. Once confirmed, the program will intelligently detect and place the rigging key points on our character. However, we have the option to adjust these points easily by dragging them to the desired location. And don't forget to check the examples in the top right corner of the program to get it right. 
Once that's done, we move on to the more complicated part, the fingers. However, AccuRig shows its intelligence again at this point and perfectly detects fingers, even those of the hands that are completely different from human ones. I tried it with a bunch of fantasy characters and it always yields good results. Nevertheless, we can adjust the points again, and if any fingers are misplaced, we can quickly correct them. Doing rigging the traditional way is much more tedious, especially in placing joints precisely inside the model, which becomes particularly cumbersome with fingers. Conversely, using the auto rig means we have no control over the rig at all, and it never turns out as well as we'd like. In this case, when it's time to generate the entire skeleton and create the bind skin, AccuRig does it so quickly and accurately that it seems like magic. This is especially noticeable around the fingers since, as you know, it's easy for fingers to stick together, causing strange deformations when they bend. To confirm that the character is ready, we can apply several example animations. However, these animations are only for testing the character and not animations that a character would actually use in a real project. To address this, the program offers the option to send our character to ActorCore's vast movement library, and we can test any professional animation from the library for free. This is extremely useful because we can check if our character performs well with the acting and the role we plan to give it in our project. Once you've uploaded your character, it will automatically be in your character folder. If you click on the symbol of the little eye, you will see that besides being able to see the promotional video of the package, you can see the movements inside. As you can see, you can buy the whole package, but you can also only buy the movement that suits you best. This way you can view your animated character on ActorCore even from your mobile phone to show it to others. Whatever the theme of your project, you can choose one or two packages full of professional movements that will fit your project. In this particular case, I want it to be an action character that moves agilely. Therefore, I look for the animation I like most and, with just one click, visualize them with my character. So if I end up purchasing the animation, I know exactly how the final product will look. It's also very useful for showing your character to the rest of the project team. If, for any reason, the character's movements doesn't quite convince, you can always go back in AccuRig to easily readjust the rig points. In my case, I've been convinced by the parkour movements, and I'm going to purchase the whole pack. By doing so, it will automatically appear in my iClone, where it will be ready to download to my library. If I also export my character as an iClone character, I can immediately start working on the final animation for my project. Now, don't be afraid to try iClone to create your own animations. Once you have the animations you're going to use, you only have to combine and correct them so that they fit perfectly with your character and the 3D environment iClone is also a good place to test our playable characters before using them within the game engine we are using. It's as simple as hitting play on the motion director and starting to drive the character around the stage. In this case, I think it works fantastically. Finally, remember that in iClone we can also add other objects that we have generated in Rodin. And this way we will add much more detail to our character. On the other hand, iClone also has different effects and rendering styles that can be very useful. For example, in the other character I used as an example, I followed the same steps. I made an automatic rig in AccuRig, and I introduced it in iClone. But in this case, I was able to set the iClone post-processing to achieve a cool cell shading effect. This is one of the big reasons why it's so cool to be able to use flat characters to generate a 3D model and its texture. The style transfers perfectly to the 3D environment, and we can get great results with just the style we were looking for. To wrap up the tutorial, I wanted to offer some advanced tips that I think could be quite helpful. I've noticed that when we create a character with many strange and intricate elements, the AI might struggle to interpret them correctly and not do its job well. In these cases, we have two options. Either keep the character as simple as possible without these details when creating the 3D model, and then add the more complex design when generating the texture, or we can provide well-crafted lighting for the character to better understand the volumes to be created. Personally, I think the first option makes more sense and could even be better if we ourselves add the details to the texture of the 3D character. Another factor to consider is that when we have tall or large characters, even if they don't have much detail, the AI has a harder time doing a good job. It's as if the character appears more blurred and it struggles to distinguish the details. If the problem isn't due to the low contrast between the character and the background, the most appropriate solution, from my point of view, is to divide the character into parts. In the case of this robot, it's especially simple. A good note is that this AI surprises me a lot when it comes to identifying what appears in the image. Even with the robot's fingers, which are quite strange and out of context, it is able to recognize what the element is. However, whenever we refine the prompt as much as possible using the right words, the result will be much closer to what we're looking for. This actually seems to be more important than the negative prompt, which I haven't noticed having a significant impact on the generated model and have barely used. 
An extra tool that can be super useful is the Mesh Editor, which allows us to correct the 3D mesh or even add new volumes, although it doesn't let us modify the polygonal composition of the mesh. This is done before texturing, as the AI will interpret the modified 3D model to calculate the textures. Assembling the model in pieces isn't as tedious as it might seem. Your character, even when it's not a robot, can also follow this process if you strategically use elements like clothing to separate it. I used AccuRig again, and also used the ActorCore Motion Library. Initially, I considered using robot movements, but I realized that wasn't really what I was looking for, and thanks to the gallery, I was able to experiment with other movements until I found some action movements that suited the character much better. I hope this entire tutorial has been helpful, and that you feel encouraged to check out all these tools that you can try for free. You can find and review the links in the description to see the results from other users on Rodin, or to check out the Actor Core Motion Library. This is the end of the tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials like this, and have a great day.